Major Slack videos. Okie dokie for this detailed walkthrough, I'm going to use my Pure Vagabond tank build. I'm assuming that you ran through, ran through rather, the Pure Vagabond part one, and you did the sacred flasks uh, run and got your sacred flasks up to plus 10. Okay, so that is the point we are at now. This walkthrough is going to serve double duty. It's going to continue the pure tank, pure vagabond tank build, and it's going to demonstrate how to get the demi human ashes up to plus seven. First of all, um, for Impaler's Catacombs, it is rated at plus three and plus one. I'm going to use a plus three longsword to go through it, just to be fair. And we need. 12 smithing stones one we have five let's go get seven more we can get three at the coastal merchant here on the coast here we can go to the coastal cave and go to that merchant he's got three smithing stones one for sale okay i've already got a long sword up to plus seven like i said i want to be fair so i'm going to use my un improved longsword and bring it up to plus three imps are susceptible to standard damage and strike damage they're resistant to slash damage so whatever weapon you're using Go for standard damage or strike damage. Here he's got three smithing stones. One, let's buy all three. Okay, so now we have eight smithing stones. One, we can get three more. At a merchant in Mistwood. We haven't been there yet. He's right there. So let's go to Fort Height West and we'll just push north to that merchant. If you're not following the pure Vagamon tank build, I would recommend going with a strike weapon, such as the Morning Star. That's easily acquired. Any kind of strike weapon, or the club. That reminds me, let me just uh, get the Vagabond's default gear back on, the shield on, and we got the Grease on. And the best thing to have would be the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, alright? From Fort Height West, just go pretty much due north and you're looking for the smoke rising from the campfire. of the merchant. There it is right there. Oh, welcome. Dear customer. Yeah, welcome. Valued Castles. I'm hungry. And he's got three smithing stones, one for sale. So now we have eleven. We just need one more. Alright, and I know where there is a straight smithing stone one, right near the first step set of grace. First step, side of grace. Make sure you got the Gravitas Ash of War on a weapon. For example, let's throw it on our longsword. Gravitas Ash of War. Magic Affinity. And let's wait till daytime. Point to the east. And we could just drop off the cliff here and get ready to deal with some bats. As soon as you land, off you go. Grab this to bring the bats down. And again. Done and done. Once you're taking care of those guys. Push to the south here. Hook around. You gotta watch out for a big hole there. So that's why I advise you to go this way. Find a wagon. And here. 
It's a smithing stone that people rarely get. It's right there. Smithing stone one. Okay, so now they got 12 smithing stones one. Let's go back to the round table and upgrade our longsword to plus three. Once again, if you're not playing as a pure vagabond, I would recommend upgrading your a strike weapon such as the Morning Star to plus three or anything better. You know, you don't have to go with a plus three weapon. I'm just doing it for demonstrational purposes. Let's go with your best weapon, obviously. All right, so this baby up to plus three. And that's it. I know we can upgrade it further, but like I said, I don't want to be fair. Next! In Pegler's Catacombs, that's pretty much it for... Um... Oh, wait. Let's uh, do a quick tour of Lyurnia Elixir, a nomadic merchant. If you were following my Pure Vagabond tank build, you already have this cookbook, but just to show it. This merchant here has this book cookbook here, the Nomadic Merchants, Nomadic Warriors Cookbook, rather, number 11, which will allow you to make crystal darts. All right? Crystal darts only require one ingredient, cracked crystal. And like I said in the quick walkthrough, the best place to farm them is the Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, which is right here. Okay, so let's just fast travel to East Ray Lucaria Gate. And we'll drop on down to that location and farm up some cracked crystal just for demonstrational purposes. So if you're following the pure vagabond tank build, you've already got a ton of crystal darts. Off to the east. And you're looking for this big pillar right here. See that pillar sticking up right there? Just do a double jump off to the left of it. One, two, and you'll jump right down on top of this spirit spring. Make sure you do double jump because sometimes if you just do a single jump, and you slide down the mountain, sometimes the the game occasionally registers that as a death for some reason. It's, you know, even though you're on the spirit spring, if you slide down the mountain, it just, you know. And you can just put a beacon right here, this big orange circle here, which indicates that that is the Ray Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. It's right there. You take the elevator down, there's a kind of like a secret alcove on the way down, which also has some cracked crystal, but, you know, that's a bit of a waste of time. Just take the elevator all the way down, and right away, you got some cracked crystal here, more cracked crystal here. Touch up the side of grace so you can come back easily. Rest to reset the location and here's your farm just run out here you can see a miner off to the, to the right there patrolling just ignore him grab these cracked crystal here there's four cracked crystal right there you know you have to deal with this guy and back and rinse and repeat to your heart's desire you can also add the two cracked crystal at the back of the uh, Of the elevator like I showed you earlier. Okay, so that's your cracked crystal farm. Easy peasy. Alright, let's go take on Impaler's Catacombs. So everybody make yourself a big batch of crystal darts. Get those ready to go. You'd use those on the imps as well. Okay, we are ready. We are ready, Freddy. To get to Impaler's Catacombs, we're gonna have to go to Castle Morn Rampart. Castle Morn Rampart here on the east side of the Weeping Peninsula. Do, do a 180, find the Spirit Spring. Jump. Go way up. You can solve this puzzle here. Um, kill three invisible turtles and get yourself a memory stone. We're not going to bother with that because that's not applicable to this particular build. Gallop off to the north, and there's a little hidden side of grace right here. Make sure you activate that and come back here easily. 
and now we're gonna push to the northeast this way. And Imperialist Catacombs is right, boom, there. Okay, so just around the corner here. All the imps in Impaler's Catacombs are extremely susceptible to guard counter. That's your best way to deal with them. Best way to stay nice and healthy. Just wait for them to hit you with your shield up. As soon as they hit you, hit the strong attack button, you get a guard counter. Break their stance and then you can do a critical hit. Finish them off. And since you're going to be doing lots of guard counters, the best talisman to have hooked up is the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, so every time you do a critical hit, you get health back. Stay nice and healthy. Alright? Alright, stick with the slack, and you won't get whacked. Let's get busy. Impaler's Catacombs. There is an imp gonna come up. Right here. Down he goes. Guard counter. Stab that bugger up, and you're good to go. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Good enough. Okay, here's the boss door. You know the routine, find the lever to open the door. Down here is an imp dropping off there, you can see him right there. There's another one down there, so you want to sucker this one out. Divide and conquer. It's going to start throwing stuff at you, you can just roll through it, get up in his face. Wait for him to do an attack, or just, you know. Give him a little incentive here. He's trying to sucker me in. Because there's his buddy. So let's just throw a few crystal darts at him. Okay, so now... <laughs> um, see, his buddy killed him, eh? Because these guys can be frenzied as well with crystal darts. Down he goes, alright. What do you got for me? Smithing Stone 1. Thank you very much. And here is a Grave Lover at 1. Okay, so we got our Demi-Humans up to plus 1. Take care of that guy. That is the way to the boss lever. Let's go around the corner here. And get a Grave Lover too. Watch it now. This guy's going to ambush you. Gotta love that guard counter. And here's Grape Lover 2. So now you got your Demi Humans up to plus 2. Back this way. This is the kind of floor that rises up. Just go out a little bit, make it rise up, and then drop down below it. Here you can get a Ghost Glover 1. Strike that Ghost Glover 2. Behind this pillar here is another Grape Glover 2. Grave Lover 1, and this is some root resin here. All these things that are spawning these claymen, just forget them. They're just going to perpetually spawn. There's another Grave Lover 1, and I believe that's all we want here. This is a perpetual spawn. You could be down here forever. Just forget them. Just grab all the goodies there, and climb up this ladder to the northwest. And here is the boss lever. Boss door lever. Yank that and the boss door is now open as indicated by the notification somewhere a heavy door has opened. Um, there is an imp around this corner here. You can just sneak up, get close to this pillar right here, dude. Do some gravitas. Bring him out of hiding. Here's another great lever too and that's it this opening and you can do the boss fight now if you're ready I'm ready actually you know what since we have an abundance of grave lovers one and two this boss fight will be a lot easier if we upgrade our lone wolf ashes to plus two this will only cost 1500 runes. I think it's only cost gonna cost about 1200 runes yeah we have some spare Okay, we currently have five Great Blubberts 1 and four Great Blubberts 2. We could spare a couple. No problem. And the boss door is right near the entrance, so. 
Why not? Path of least resistance, right? Okay, back to the round table and we're going to visit Rodriga. This will give our lone wolves, lone wolves more survivability. Because the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog, he's a force to be reckoned with. Greetings. Greetings. Okay, so I'll create these guys to plus two. Okay, so you got not, a lot more survivability. Back to Impaler's Catacombs. Alright, I would recommend some kind of Ash of War that has a ranged attack. So let's swap out our Gravitas Ash of War for, say, the Sacred Blade. Sacred Affinity. And here come the authorities. Kicking too much ass, Slack. Alright, that's it. Let's take care of this guy. Stay nice and healthy. And the other one down there. There we go, did not didn't use up any resources. We're ready for the boss fight. Okay, all is in readiness. We got our Loma Fashes at plus two. We got the crystal darts ready to go. We got our plus three sacred longsword with the sacred blade ready to go. The strategy is, as soon as we go in, don't spawn the Lone Wolf Ashes right away. We're going to go for the Crystal Dart strategy first, okay? So you're going to go in, press lock on. The game's going to lock you onto one of the imps over this way, you know, because the game likes to fuck with you. Pardon my French, but it does. And you're going to have to switch your lock on over to the um, Earth Tree Burial Watchdog, which is right in the center. As soon as you've got look a lot, but as soon as you've locked onto him, start spamming those Crystal Darts until you see him can kind of get like shock electrified. As soon as he like shock electrified, he's frenzied. Then we're going to dart off to the right here and circle around the perimeter while the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog is stomping his own imps. Okay, you're going to keep your distance and we're going to try to get in the far corner and then we'll spawn our Lone Wolf Ashes and wait for an opportune moment to finish off the Earth Tree Bur Burial Watchdog once he's finished off all his imps and the Lone Wolf Ashes that finished off the imps. Okay, that's the plan. Let's do it. In we go. Lock on, switch over to the Earth Tree Burial Watchdog, spam him, spam him, spam him. He's electrified, and he's going to go after his own imps. Keep your distance. He's already taking damage, even from his own imps. Let's spawn the Lone Wolves. And... It's going well. There's only one imp left. Wolves are still alive. Let's start bombarding with Sacred Blade. Keep your distance because he can do a lot of damage. He's done. And it's that easy. And for our efforts, we get the demi human ashes. Voila, he's done, no? Hey boys, calm down. Really glad all of you survived. That's that's great. That's fantastic. Okay, calm down, calm down. Alright. Back to Lone Wolf Doggy Land. There you go. Okay. Alright, so we got the Lone Wolf Ashes. Or rather, what did I say? We've got the Demi Human Ashes. And we could already take them up to plus two. Let's go do that. Not that we'll need them, but you know. Alternatively, you can follow this walkthrough and um, get Great Blubber one through seven and then, you know, use them for something else. But I'd recommend putting them on the Demi Humans. Demi Humans kick ass. And I'm going to do that. 
for my pure vagabond tank build, this is the next step. So I'll definitely do that. Okay, so demi humans up to one, two. Let's go get three, four, and five. This is at the Minor Earth Tree Catacombs. The closest location that we've already discovered with this particular build is Rotview Balcony here in Kaled. All right, so let's go there. Let's have a little rest. Wait till morning. Point to the north. If you look on your map and you see this kind of like dark squiggly line and there's a little point right there, that's the safe place to drop down. So you could just put a beacon there and head towards that. Right here. And push off to the east. Now you're going to run into this big boss fight. We don't have to do it. Dead ahead. The Putrid Avatar. You can easily kill him with fire pots from up above. Table that for a later date. For now, just run right past him. And look for the doorway on the east side. Right here. Open that door. And the animation of opening the door will protect you from him. But you should start spamming rolls so that you roll through. Just in case he tries to do see do that. All right? And we are here in the minor retreat catacombs. And let's just rest to reset him. And we're good to go. Probably want to put on your um, any gear that is high in immunity. If you're following the pure, pure vagabond tank build, put on your traveler's gear. Not that this will, you know, it's no biggie if you don't have any high immunity gear. It's not that, you know, I'm just recommending this for anybody, you know, who's like, you know, gamers of all skill levels. Okay, so we're going to face an imp right here. Guard counter. You know the routine. Oh, he's still alive. There we go. Good on you, buddy. Good on you. All right, and let's take the elevator down. Turn towards the east. There is Grave Lovewort 4. Here is Grave Lovewort 3. And here is Grave Lovewort 5. It's that easy. We're gone. That's all we want. Okay. Vagabond gear back on. Finally. Up to the Altus Plateau. The closest location to get to where we want to go is simply the Altus Plateau side of Grace. Okay, it's actually called that. The Altus Plateau right there. Let's go there now. I'm going to have to take a little ride to get to this location, Gelmir Hero's Grave. Let me show you exactly how to get there. From here, we're just going to go north. And you see that little ridge of rocks, that cliff there? You're going to ride along this side here, but not too far down that way. Okay, and just go straight up here. Keeping the cliffs on your left side. This is a safe drop down. And if you've been following the pure tank or pure vagabond tank build, this is a golden sea that we haven't picked up yet. Grab that. 
and make sure you discover this head of grace right here. Next, you look on your map, zoom in, and you see this line of cliffs running up here, okay? And you see this kind of squiggly crack right here, right at the bent. There is a spirit spring right there, directly across from, I believe that's the old Altus tunnel. Yeah, the old Altus tunnel, okay? Right there, that's where we're going. Okay, so you have to push down to the east first to get off, like, this cliff here, because it's too high to jump off there. And you can see our beacon off in the distance there, so let's stick to the right side. Bit of activity here. There's going to be a mystic mounted horseman, and there's a troll bobbing around. We don't want to be bothered with that. We just want to get to the spirit spring. We'll stick to the right side. All the way up here. There's a troll. There's the mystic horseman. And here is our beacon. And the spirit spring. Did Slack call it or did Slack call it? Up here. Turn to the north, you're gonna find this another spirit spring. Up we go. And this will put you right near a bridge. Go across the bridge. On the other side of the bridge, to the left, you can see a Site of Grace. Let's discover that. Next, point yourself to the northwest. You can stick on the left side. Stick to the cliffs on the left side. And gallop up. Anything that gets you in your way, jump over or go around, but mostly jump over. Stick to the left side as much as you can. You're looking for two fires flanking a rope ladder. There they are, the two fires flanking the rope ladder. Get on that ladder and climb as quickly as you can. Because there is some activity down below, as you can see. So get your ass in gear and get up that ladder, otherwise you're going to have to deal with those guys. All right. Up at the top, we got another side of grace just off the left here, conveniently enough. We can hit that up momentarily. First, let's loot this golden room graveyard. Come on now, you want you know you want a game. Add a boy. And I believe there's six. I'm trying to jump on top of these guys to get the height round. No, it looks like I got them all. I only counted five. Oh well. Hit up the side of grace. Alright, this is another dangerous location off to the west here. It's really not that big of a deal. Gelmer Hero's grave is up here. Down, you see this like rocky sliver here? Just right here at the end of this. It's kind of like pointing almost to Gelmer's hero, Hero's grave. So let's put a beacon there. We're going to shoot up here and down here. All right. Just run past everything. It's no big deal. Once again, you can stick to the left side.
And that's just me grabbing stuff because I like grabbing stuff. Okay, and once you get up here, you can turn to the south and head towards your beacon. And there's going to be some wolves. This is some um, mushrooms. Just want to get rid of the beacon. And here is Gelmer Heroes. Great. Open the door. And in you go. And take the elevator down. Alright, we're going to be dealing mostly with skeletons, which are best handled with holy damage. But, there is this chariot running up and down. We can use the chariot to our advantage a lot, so we don't really need holy damage to deal with these skeletons. What we what would be better is to have the Gravitas Ash of War on your plus 16 weapon. Okay, whatever plus 15 weapon or plus 16 weapon you've got. Put the Gravitas Ash of War on it, because that would be the best way to deal with the Exile Archer at the end. Okay, so Gravitas Ash of War on your Magic Halberd. Plus 17, Magic Affinity, and on um, any other weapon, put Quick Step. This will help you get through the Lava. Lava? Lava. <laughs> and it doesn't matter the Affinity, let's just put Standard Affinity. Alright. So those are the only two weapons we'll need. Halbert with Gravitas and the Longsword with Quick Step. And that's it. Okay. Quick Step is like this. For now we'll start off with the Halbert. Alright. Follow my instructions precisely and you'll get through the stick with a slack and you won't get whacked. Don't go across this line until you're ready to go. As soon as you go across this line, this chariot is going to start running up and down. If you get in the way of the chariot, it will mow you over and do a crap ton of damage. may even kill you if you don't have a lot of health. Um, we're going to have to deal with skeletons as we make our way down this hellacious lava flanked chariot ride thingy. <laughs> There's going to be two skeletons right away using my halberd as a pointer one's going to come out there and another one's going to come out there they're going to flank you as you make your way down you can actually blast right through them and pull a bobby or and blast right through them i don't know if any of you recognize that reference there that famous game the nhl game bobby or blast through the two of the defensemen i think it's probably on youtube a shot of that you're just going to blast right through them and go down to the alcove I don't know if you can see it. It's on the right side there at the first landing, okay? So you're going to go all the way down, blast through the two skeletons, and you'll be able to get down to the first landing before the chariot comes up. So let's go for it. Run straight down, straight down, straight down. Here we come. Jump over them. Keep going straight. Get down to the first landing. Cut off to the right. Jump over here and let fly with the gravitas. And it usually pops them out. And you can kill them. And these guys, if they get up in your face, do grab this again. And it usually shoots them out, which is kind of hilarious. And even if they come back to life, the chariot will run them over. Okay? So like I said, use the chariot to your advantage. Make sure that all the skeletons are dead, and then we're going to have to watch the chariot. To see when is the best time to go. The best time to go is right after it leaves right now, okay, as it's on its way down. Run down here, now you're gonna go to the alcohol to the left, in here. He always jumps out like that, you don't have to do anything. He jumps out, gets run over by the chariot, that pushes him out into the lava, and the lava kills him. Alright? Now we're gonna watch the chariot and see when the most opportune time to go next, and that would be just after it starts going down that gives us the longest runaway and now we're going for the alcove on the other side okay so as it passes on its way down we're gonna go for that one Here it comes and let's go straight down you got lots of time and head to the alcove on the right in here lock on grab this and you see the chair takes care of him and 
and if he comes back to life, the lab will take care of him. Okay, so let's watch the chariot. It keeps changing its route, by the way. As you go down the, the lava ramp, it'll start changing its route. So you have to adjust your strategy as you go. As you can see, the longest it's going to be away is when it's when it's at the top. So obviously the best time to go is when it's just passing by on its way up. Okay, and we're going for the alcove on the other side. Now let's go for it. All the way down, and we're going to jump across here. And here we go. Here is your grave lover at 7. Okay, get in sneak mode. And I'll show you grave lover at 6. It's right there where my pointer, my halberd is pointing. That's it. There is an XL archer around the corner here. Let's get our shield up. And let's just spam him with Gravitus and see if we can take care of him. Refill that feet. And let's go for it. And down he goes. Back into sneak mode. This guy's wandering over to investigate. Surprised he took that and he did so much damage. I'm really surprised. Okay, there's another exile uh, archer over there, right there. You don't have to deal with him. He got a little suspicious. What if we can just, just go off to the side here? And we can use grab just to kill this guy. And just grab this and grab your grave glove for six. Okay, so now you have your demi humans up to plus seven. Um, I believe that's another six right there, and there's another seven down at the end. Since we're here. That's another seven. Pretty sure there's another six down there. What we could do, because there's a couple of these um, these commoners right behind him, and it could turn that fight into a total clusterfuck because the game's going to hijack your lock on as you're trying to take care of this guy. So let's just, um, you see, he's doing it already. Let's just throw a couple of crystal darts at him and draw him away. There we go. Make sure he shields up, and when he gets close, let fly with the gravitas. And down he goes. Okay, so that just leaves the commoners. And there's another one down here. And it should be one more. There we go. Okay, and here's another great blubber at six another seven All right so that's it not gonna do the boss fight or anything like that just came here for the grave lovers now we got to get back up for this you're gonna use quick step okay and we'll watch the cherry carefully see what it's doing Okay, so it looks like our best chance in this particular configuration is right now. Quick step, quick step, and run up. Go for the alcove on the left. Okay, now our best chance is right after it passes by on its way down. Let's go for it. and into this alcove. You're always switching sides as you proceed up. Okay, so now our best chance is right after it goes down. And switch to the other side. Okay, now here's where it gets tricky. The game's gonna sucker you in. You would think that your best chance is to go now and go for that alcove over there, but what's, heck, what's gonna happen 
is the game's going to switch the chariot to run. So you're going to get in that alcove there and all of a sudden the chariot's going to start running from here up to the top and it'll be impossible to get to the top without getting run over. So what you're going to do is your best bet is to quick step as soon as it goes down while it's in this particular configuration, you see it's way down there. As soon as it goes down we're going to quick step through the lava twice, get on the ramp and then run straight to the top all the way. That's the only way to make it. Alright, so here we go. Wait till it's passing on its way down. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we go. And one, two, run for it. Straight to the top. Don't stop. Straight for the top. And you're going to have time because the chariot is not switched over to its other configuration where it's going to get all sneaky and, you know. Haha, uh -huh. did you miss me? There you go. And that's how to get out without getting killed. Now we are good to go. It's a done deal. And we made some money. Out we go, back to the round table, and let's bring our demi humans up to plus seven. Greetings, are you here for? Five, six, seven. Who loves you? Slack loves us. That's right, Slack loves you, and don't you forget it. We're done here. Thanks a lot for watching. If you thought this video was remotely entertaining and or informative, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up, post a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of my videos. For those of you following my Pure Vagabond Tank build, part two will follow shortly. Okay, most likely tomorrow. All right, see you next time.